Dan Ullman, Matt Bernie are the feature race at Santa Anita on Sunday is the grade three $100,000 adoration stakes for fillies and mares, and you can play the adoration with a DRF Bets account. Sign up at drf.com forward slash join, type in the promo code TV150, and you get a $150 sign up bonus. Let's take a peek at this field for a grade three 100 grander. There are some really nice horses in this race, especially Vale Dory and Fault, who figure to vie for favoritism. Vale Dory for Bob Baffert. If it wasn't for two of Stellar Wind's necks, would be riding a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight race win streak coming into this spot. But we haven't seen her since July, and I wonder if Bob Baffert's just using this as a comeback. The other crazy thing is, go through and look at all of her races in Southern California, with the exception of the first start where she ran into a horse called Go Glory Zapper. Her only losses have come to Stellar Wind. Everyone else she's defeated. Uh, it's really hard to knock anything that she does. She's honest. She shows up and runs. Uh, I still maintain, and I know we're probably never going to get it at this point. You and I, I think, have both been in agreement a little bit. I'd love to see her a little bit shorter. Love to see her one turn, seven eights, but... Look, if she shows up and she's ready to go here, she's certainly a player, but I kind of agree with you. I wonder, are we going to get better second off the layoff? Baffert off the layoff didn't exactly work well with Abel Tasman at Churchill Downs on Friday, but it's still a positive formulator fact, as you see. Past five years, older dirt routers off layoffs of six months or greater, 26% winners, almost a $3 return on investment. And we know that Vale Dory's good tactical speed is going to probably put her in a great spot, sitting second in the early portion of the race off the likely pace setter mended. Uh, let's talk about the horse, though, that she's going to have to beat, and that is Fault. And I always liked Fault on the turf. She finally won me over towards the end of last year, and Phil D'Amato took a shot in the grade one Santa Margarita, and it really paid off. He got a fast pace for Fault. Fault blew by pace setter, mended turning for home, and then really turned on the afterburners, popping a 101 buyer speed figure and beating three of these common foes. Do you think she'll get a similar fast pace scenario here? Does she even need it? I don't know that it's going to be as fast as what she saw in that most recent run in the Santa Margarita, but and I'm really torn on her because she was so impressive, but she beat an inferior field and she had an unbelievable pace set up. So, you know, I, I kind of feel like the true fault is somewhere in the middle as far as the dirt is concerned, and perhaps that's a vulnerable spot on Sunday afternoon with a horse like Vale Dory and some of these other girls, but visually I thought she was tremendous winning that race and it's going to be interesting to see if she fires and she looks good here at a little bit of a shorter distance at a mile and a 16th you know the fact that she can kind of do anything she's worth her weight in gold and Phil D'Amato gets some good they usually stay good according to this formulator fact over the past three years older last out winning dirt routers off a 45 to 60 day layoff that's almost 50 percent Nine for 19, a $2.43 ROI, a little bit of pace up front, and here comes Fault from the back of the pack. You know I've always been Mended's biggest fan. I mean, she was claimed for 12-5 for back in January of 2017 by John Martin and just went on an absolute roll, not only just reeling off win after win after win, but then going to Gulfstream and winning one of the claiming crown races. Tough beat to the quality Mopatism in the La Cunada two starts back. Last time out in the Santa Margarita, I wanted to give her a little bit of a chance. Unfortunately for Mended, she was occupied on a pretty hot pace by a 50 to 1 shot. I think the jock was worried about the mile and an eighth and didn't want to try to open up a little bit too soon. And the next thing you know, fault blew right by her. She was game to hold on for second. I think she makes the lead in here. The problem is you're going to have a more quality horse than last time breathing down her neck if Vale Dory is sharp. She ran her eyeballs out in that most recent race. There really wasn't a heck of a lot more she could have done. Um, I kind of look at it and say, I wonder here if it's an instance where do Vail Dory and the connections, do they think that Mended is just too cheap and too weak and we'll be able to take this whenever we want? And if that's the case, do they get a little bit more tentative maybe than they should? Because Mended is no slouch on the front end. If they give her an inch, I think she can get real brave, but... You bring up the most important piece off this long layoff with Vail Dory. You would imagine she's going to be forwardly placed. And if they're if they're really duking it out, does it soften mend it up a little bit too much? We'll find out. But I, I certainly wouldn't. If I'm Vail Dory's camp, don't get too overconfident. Don't let Mended get too far away because she can go on with it. 
La Force doesn't exactly have a winning profile, only two for 18, but I think Patty Gallagher's done a real nice job with La Force in getting her to run to her great potential. Third in the La Cunada, getting that all-important graded stakes placing, then a confidence-building win against entry-level optional claimers. And last time out, the pace was fast. She's just not as good of a closer as Fault is right now, but who's to say she can't get another piece in a big uh, graded stakes race? Yeah, you know, a two for 18, like you say, she's hard to trust as far as a win contender is concerned, but eight times second or third, I think you try to take her back and make one run. I always try to make Shenandoah Queen a nice one. I liked her performance in the Tranquility Lake at Del Mar, and maybe she just needs to get back to that racing surface before she does her best. But in graded stakes races, she just seems to be a little bit overmatched. Last time out, she really didn't make much of a run against Fapian, who's running in the graded stakes race in New York on Sunday. Uh, I just wonder if Shenandoah Queen ever going to get back to that tranquility lake like you say maybe it's a matter of just getting back to the main track at del mar we haven't seen her since that nice effort in that tranquility lake didn't think she was awful in the la cañada but even having said that if she replicates that la cañada minor award at best Turf to dirt resulted in a blowout maiden win for the number one Dalsaros in the second lifetime start. They're going to try that pattern again, but she ran in the Santa Margarita against Fault. She should. She didn't break very well, but considering the fast pace, we expected her to do a little bit of running late, and she was just no match for Fault. She might be in a little bit tough. Plain and simple, she's too slow right now to truly be looked at as a contender, maybe a minor award. And uh, talking about being in a little bit tough, the number six Demi Goddess is one for 49. I, uh, what are we doing? I, I mean, I, I don't have any comment. <laughs> Let's take a look at our top selections in race number seven. Matt likes Demi Goddess on top. No, he's going to go with Fault. Uh, coming from uh, getting get another solid pace situation, and Fault's just been so good. Turf, dirt, Phil D'Amato. Uh, she could be a nice filly if, you know, Vale Dory doesn't come back and Stellar Wind's retired, and who knows what we're going to get with Unique Bella. Abel Tasman didn't exactly fire back. All of a sudden, things are falling into place for Fault. To me, this this actually becomes a, a pretty major race on a Agreed. weekend where all eyes are going to be looking at, at Churchill Downs, obviously. But if all of a sudden Fault comes through and blows the doors off this field like she did in the Santa Margarita, and you brought it up, a little bit of a lackluster or a lot lackluster performance from Abel Tasman. Unique Bell has got to prove that she can actually ship and bring her race from Southern California with her. All of a sudden, Fault becomes a really, really interesting player in that older Philly and Mare division. I wonder if Vale Dory is 100% cranked up for this race. Like you, I wonder if she's going to want to go after Mended early, knowing that Fault is going to be chugging at the back of the pack. And I wonder if the rock-solid Mended gets away with an easier lead than expected this time around. I'm a big fan of hers. She's acquitted herself well in her last two races, pairing up by her tops. She obviously needs to improve to beat these two. But given an advantageous pace scenario at the price, I'll take a chance with Mended. Matt's going with the seven Fault. I'm going 2375 in the Grade 3 Adoration Stakes at the Great Race Place on Sunday. You can bet that whole card via DRF Bet. Sign up for a new account, get your 150 to buck bucks. Go to drf.com forward slash join. The promo code is TV150. Approximate post time for the Adoration, 3.30 Pacific on Sunday. Best of luck.